So here's the oil I drained from the 205. It, uh, it's been 5,000 miles, so I drained it, you know, because the break-in period was up. And uh, no noise, drivability's fine, but I drain it and it comes out silver. So which leads me to believe it's something aluminum is broken or is rubbing. No metal flakes, um, nothing much on the magnet, nothing more than what you see from the typical break-in from gears, brand new gears that is, and bearings. So I'm about to rip it out and uh, let's see what happens. My guess is a bearing cap. All right, a few tools that may be helpful in removing your diff. Like I said, this is not a how-to video. This is just me going through a flight process to see if my ability to build a diff is good, good enough. So, um, like I said, I don't know what's wrong with the M205 yet or if there's even anything even wrong with it. So, the tool that I used is this pry bar. It kind of, it helps, uh, Pry the M205 out if it's kind of lodged or catty cornered. Also, you can use it to hold the drive shaft while trying to loosen the bolts. Um, 14 millimeter. Um, I have more than one 14 millimeter in case I can't get the right angle. 17 millimeter, that's for the cross member. 19 millimeter for the mounting bolts. Um, I got 10 millimeter for the, uh, the cover on the 205 and a rubber mallet for knocking the 205 cover off and another tool that i greatly appreciate and it's probably one of the best purchases i've ever made other than my dewalt cordless impact is uh these ratcheting wrenches been pretty damn reliable they got nice teeth and if say if one of the teeth is kind of marled up on a six point they will kind of almost grab onto anything I try to stay away from 12 point sockets, I usually do, because those are more prone to stripping heads, especially if you're putting, if it's a soft headed bolt, and especially, definitely especially if it's stainless. But these have been very, very handy. I carry these when I travel, they give you the leverage you need, and uh, so far they've held up. You know? I got them on Amazon, I got a set metric set for well over $100 and they had them in standard as well. So uh, I'm going to leave the CV axles in because uh, I don't I'm hoping for the best and just hoping to just replace a part today or within the next week and um, I can just slap the 205 back in but I'm going to take the wheels off. Um, it's just a 14 millimeter. Normally if I had the wheels off I'll just get an impact and run a long extension and um, turn the wheel or turn the, um, the hub and get one bolt at a time from this location that's been the with a little swivel that's been the quickest method for me instead of crawling underneath so you just spin the cv and um, work from the same angle the whole time with an extension a swivel whatever you need to get around the shock because all shocks are different sizes so anyways i'm gonna rip the sucker out and uh continue getting the 205. The free play in this axle stub was making me more believe that it is the uh, that bearing cap. It's very odd, and um, I, my theory is it happened when I brought my CV axle axle when I was up at a uh, Stony. So either that or it uh, fractured and then continued to finish itself off. So, yep. That's it for now. All right, now that uh, the CV axle bolts are out, my Free Harbor Freight magnetic tray, it's time to take the drive shaft out. And a uh, cool little note, it's the front drive shaft is the same as the Titan, so, you know, gives you flexibility when you're in a scrap yard. You know, grab you one, have one as a spare. It's not too often these go out but you know, I got one and I carry it for long trips. So off to the next step. Next step, we need to loosen and remove our cross member. I recommend removing it in one setting, which means you either want the vehicle on the ground both times when installing and removing or on jack stands when installing and removing because the body does flex 
and then if you put it back in the way you took it off the bolt holes align a little easier um, you can still align it either way but it's just my recommendation I mean I'm taking it 205 down with the vehicle on the ground and so I'm just gonna bench it out done it before and um, by removing this cross member it allows the 205 to come straight down also allows you to access your bolts on your draft shaft a little easier um, if you just want to remove your dry shaft you could just use a 14 millimeter offset wrench and a rubber mallet to help loosen them if you have a uh, Loctite on them and uh, bust them loose and sometimes I also put like a crowbar or, or something in here to keep the dry shaft from moving. I've heard of others uh, engaging four wheel drive and you know, I'm not sure if that's true or not but I'm engaging the four wheel drive and with even gear to keep it from spinning. If that's possible and it works be my guest but um, I'll have to remove the cross member. All right, cross members out. I used a uh, 17 millimeter with an impact and a wrench, open end wrench, combo wrench to remove it. As you can see, it's easier to remove the draw shaft with the cross member out of the way. There it is. Sorry for the lighting. So off to the next step, and that is removing the draw shaft using a pry bar and a 14 millimeter wrench. All right, now that I got the drive shaft out, I um, also like to look at the U joints, you know, see if they're loose at all, you know, expect it for cracks or whatnot. And these are still pretty stiff and uh, they're visibly fine. Seals aren't falling off and whatnot. All the hardware is there. And um, I'm gonna remove these bolts because I shouldn't have put them back in because the disc is gonna come straight down and remove it. So it's just easier that these are out of the way. So. But these are 19 bolts. You got 19 millimeter bolts. There's three of them. And uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll take all the nuts off. I'll remove this top bolt first and then I'll remove this one and then I'll support it. I mean, you can support it with a jack and then when I get, get it supported, I'll remove this final bolt and I'll drop it. Alrighty, before we drop it, you need to make sure you remove your breather hose. You'll feel uh, some resistance when you drop the diff, but um, yeah, if you don't drop it, you're either going to rip it out of your air cleaner box, which is just connected with a uh, plastic tab, or you'll bend the breather tube, which you don't want to do. So just be sure you do that. And what I removed to get the dip out, the mounting bolts are right here. One screws right in the body, and then these two, both left and right, have nuts on them. This was toward the rear, and that was uh, to the left and right for the dip. I'm gonna use a trans jack, or an ATV, ATV jack to drop it. And while you drop it, kind of support the left side of the dip because it's not exactly centered. And I mean, if you're feeling froggy, you can um, ratchet strap it. But um, I just usually support it. It's just quicker that way. All right. All right, y'all gonna see it the same time I do. I'm using a 10 mil socket to remove the cover. Uh, you got all those bolts on the front and you also have this additional bolt on the back a lot of people will take the cover off and they'll see it's not coming off well you got this one bolt right here that you got to finish taking off Alrighty. Uh, like I said that one bolt that goes behind the cover is longer than the others so keep it as a solder. Just remember, it's the only one like it. Now to take the cover off. Couldn't find out everything is good. All my bolts are tight. 
My bearing caps are fine. Pinion, there's no marks on it. It has an even wear pattern. Um, none of the spider gears are broken, surprisingly. There is some slop. You know, there's like some... It's pretty sloppy. That probably explains why the axle stubs are up so loose. Everybody feels that looseness in the axle stub. It's not a perfect fit. Um, bearing caps, like I said, are fine. I was thinking that was what the issue was, but thank God it's not. Um, you know, like I said, you got your ring gear here, and pinion back there, and I span it, and no sign of, you know, damaged bearings. Everything's quiet, so. And um, the bolts on the ring gear are tight. Of course, when you take those off, those are reverse threads, so be aware of that. Some more anatomy of the N205 that, you know, come to find out when I read the service manual. Um, this one mentioned, but you got these set screws for your side adjusters. And what fooled me the first time was uh, it was full, it was covered with RTV, and I didn't know they were there. And so I stripped out my side adjusters trying to take them out. Ended up having to order two from Nissan, which is great. Nissan sells parts of these, and I get them pretty quickly, so that's awesome. But yeah, if you don't take these little Allen head set screws out, you will not get your side adjusters out, and that holds the backlash setting, the side adjusters, side adjuster set screws do. So, so good news, we're good on the 205. I don't totally suck at building um, differentials. So I'm gonna throw it back in, lube her on up and keep driving on it and hope for the best. Oh, and also on a final note, if you happen to get an M205, is one thing I noticed about this that the RO-180 did not have. There are burrs everywhere, inside and out. This, this, the casting material is just messy. So I recommend, if you're gonna build one from, a, from scratch or disassemble and reassemble it, buy you a deburring tool and just remove all of the burrs inside the dip. You can see the little speck. Those are burrs left over from the manufacturing casting process. So this is diff is uh, cast aluminum. They've been known to break from the people that abuse the hell out of them. And I'm waiting on the day that it happens to me. But yeah, also, you know, just handling it, I've been cut from the poor casting material on the outside of this. So just be careful. Like I said, you just be mindful that this casting material can come loose and yeah it's aluminum but it can come loose and get in your gears get in your bearings you know it's just best if to deburr it the best you can with something that's meant to deburr aluminum you just use you know standard sandpaper it'll just clog your sandpaper and piles up so you just want to use something that's meant for aluminum you usually just I would just go buy like an a Dremel attachment or something and just clean it up. And of course, clean it up real nice. Like I said, this is, I'm not flicking y'all off. This is RTV. That's exactly the color of the RTV. So that's all it was, is I overflowed the diff with the RTV. It was just too big of a bead. And it just came off over time. Thank God it's not aluminum. Well, I saw the guy, guys. I got some uh, better video camera equipment coming, so it's something I'm probably going to end up doing more often. Because I realize there's a void out there for instruction on these. A lot of questions get asked. And, uh, you know, with how toxic social media is nowadays, um, there just needs to be a direct method of showing how to do stuff. You know, not everybody will pick up a book and learn things. And social media is crippled people because of that, so. All I could say is, learn this stuff. If you break something, don't feel bad doing it. 
because it's just a learning opportunity. Paying someone else is only cheating you. And the more you learn, the less likely you are to call a tow truck if you break on the trail or away from home. So that's all I got. Be sure to subscribe and like my channel, The Smitty's Garage. Comment below on how crappy of a mechanic I am. Hit me up for any questions. I got a lot more to come. Thanks for watching. Oh, and there's my badass 85. It's beautiful. Take it easy, guys. Bye.